here and today I am yet again answering another question about Ukpasa. How do I introduce myself, Gogo? If you are new to the classroom, welcome, welcome. It's Learning with Noma, your home of spiritual learning and healing. This is our online comprehensive classroom where we are changing our lives one lesson at a time. In this classroom, a lesson learned should be a lesson shared. So do not be afraid to subscribe. The education is free, no school fees, nothing. You just need to subscribe so that you can be notified when new lessons are uploaded in the classroom. And remember, if you find the information in the lesson insightful, leave me with a thumbs up, hit the like button, and do not be afraid to click the share button. Share, 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 share. Do not forget, subscribe. Okay, so the question that I need to answer today is how do I introduce myself? If you do not uh, know yet, or if you have not visited the lesson of the importance of reintroducing yourself, the link is in the bar is in the description below. So you can just click that and watch the lesson of the importance of reintroducing yourself. Hence people are now saying, Gogo, how do I then introduce myself? All right. I'll, I'm, I'm a very practical person and maybe it comes back from uh, me as a nursing educator who was based in a hospital. So I was hospital uh, based academic staff member, a clinical facilitator for most. That means the student nurses would go to college to learn theory and they would then come back to the hospital and I I'd bring the theory into practice. I will show them practically what was meant in theory when we talk about the nursing process. How do you apply the nursing process to the practice? Now, even with spirituality, that is how I have grown to, to become as an educator. I always try to bring it into the practical sense, your everyday life, and make you understand when you go down on your knees, upatla, how exactly is it applicable and why am I practicing it the way I'm practicing it? Remember that everything and, um, you know, all the lessons that are shared in this classroom are Gognoma's own experience, her own path with her spiritual guides. So you take what resonates with you, you leave that that doesn't. We do not disregard, we do not dismiss, we just put it aside and leave it for the next person. You will find something that resonates with you and will not be resonating with another. In the comments, do not forget that you are allowed to leave comments share your stories let us learn that is why it's called learning with noma because i'll also love to learn how you do it all right so how do we introduce ourselves i'm gonna take it to the practical side first let me say to you you are at a family reunion and we know usually at family reunions you'll have a table that is sitting up and your mom will then take you and introduce you to how she introduces you she'll tell them hey this is my third born daughter uh, no, Ma, do you remember the one who was born uh, when Zban Bani was getting married? And that is how they will remember you. Now, two hours you are into the ceremony, you know, two hours into the ceremony, one of the goggles at the table calls you. But what are they going to ask you? What are they, how are they going to call you? Child, come here. When you get there, they're going to ask you first, who are you? You're not going to say, I'm Noma, I was introduced to you two hours ago. No, you have to start by saying, I'm Noma, the child of so and so. Um, yes, I was born, the one who was born, because now you know you were born during your wedding, the one who was born uh, during Ban Bani's wedding. And that is how those, oh, yes, oh, your mama came here and she introduced you earlier. Yes, can you please bring me a glass of water? Yes. Then three hours later into the same ceremony, if they call you again, they're still not going to remember who you are. And that is why it is important to always reintroduce yourself when you pass that. And that is from Gognoma and her own experience. This is how I do it. Every day when I go to my altar, and I go and partner, I always have to introduce myself and tell my ancestors who I am. Not because they don't know me, but because they, I mean, today it can be someone from hundred generations from me who are still finding their way to Umsamoami. And you know, it, it, like you, you are, you've got an entourage that works with you. So never limit yourself to just your grandmother, your great grandparents, your great, no, remember that you you are a, a branch of a tree that has been here for thousands and millions of years so you need to just remember that understand that you've been here for you know you are you are a seed that is you're a branch of a seed that has been here for thousands of years and you can always have new visitors every day in your shrine hence the importance of reintroducing yourself every time you come into the space so how do i introduce myself with the example that i've just made i said your parent will take you to the table and they are the one who will 
uh, introduce you to the to the elders that is how it was in the olden days and that is how it is in most cultures where people are still holding the tradition dear to them the parents are the one that introduces the child and this is also done in most of the rites of passage uh, rituals where a new a, a new baby is born and then you are introduced to the ancestors by a ceremony your grandparents will come your parents will be kneeling down there'll be a slaughtering of either a sheep if you are a mosuto or a baby or whoever and there'll be a goat for mostly amakos and amazulu and you know in belego then the child i i, I think that's what it's called and then um a child will will then be introduced to say this is who is born and this is the name of the child so you are always introduced by the elders to abantabadala to the ancestors but because of how things are happening now in the world and knowing that most people are in religion and i don't want to say christianity yes we are dominated by, by christianity but there are other religions that we see growing also and people are are, are, are sort of like detaching from cultural things and they are more into religion especially our parents where we then as the youth or as the new generation we are finding that we need to connect with our ancestors but our elders are not really walking the path with us how do you then come and introduce yourself how do you introduce yourself in Mogogo? well you say your name your parents names and then your grandparents names if you are lucky and you do have that you know deep uh, knowledge of Invelapiako, you can also include your great grandparents so i am going to give an example my name is matidiso mugwena the first born daughter of tabiso mugwena who is the second born son of um tabo mugwena who is um Mary, who was or who is if they're still alive who is married to um Morosi Ali that is my paternal side and that is how I would go then I'll say my mother is um the Sebo Mutaun who is the last born daughter of Tabo Mutaun who was married to Nozipo Kaba. Now, with my grandmothers or with my mother, you will see I've used her own surname from home, her own maiden name. And then now I am coming to use um, my grandmothers also own say names because i still need to remember where they come from before they were married into the family and in zulu it's so nice because you find that umakumalo will remain umakumalo in marriage so you will always know that your ugogo was from the kumalo family <laughs> you'll find that ugogo was umakumalo umadlamini was umadlamini so they will always carry their say name in the family and that will make it easy for then the grandchildren, the great grandchildren to know in the Lapiabo and how do they relate with Ukumal, how do they relate with Madamini, why do they see about Lamini in their space? And that is how you introduce yourself. And this is if you've got your father have paid damage, your mother has, you know, your your father and your mother are married. And if you find that your father has not given the due right we know that it's just going to be vice versa you'll start with your mother's uh, surname which will be the surname that you are using hopefully and then you'll end with your father's surname but my thing is i will never say to you leave out your father's surname do not call them because they they are not present in your life they have not done one two three in the lapiaco it's in the lapiaco where you are rooted you'll always be rooted just because um we planted an apple tree in the middle of a desert does not mean that it's not an apple tree so what i'm saying is that just because your father did not acknowledge you or your father did not pay the due damages it does not mean that the blood or the dna of abu Lamini is not running in your in your bloodstream and we need for me i i just feel and i always have this funny consultation also maybe it's because of how my ancestors want to serve also the world is i always have that way people are told but you cannot be isolated you are not coming from only your mother you also need to include your father yes they 
have not done what is right and that is why you will call them second but he is your father the dna of abu Lamin is running through your blood so you still need to acknowledge that dna and with you acknowledging it we can then even find ways to help you reconnect with them whether your father is no more whether you don't know your father and you know you just know that you were born from this bloodline always include them so that is how you will introduce yourself your name your parents and your grandparents and like i said if you are lucky and you know your history deeper you can always go to an extent of saying your great grandparents but the importance of introducing yourself is for them to know who you are and for them to understand who is coming forth and who is requesting assistance from them and this you do when you are coming in samo and you are going to talk to your ancestors in a formal way like i've been saying if it was in the olden days um there are different reasons why we pass that so let me also just um cover that in this in this lesson why do you pass that in one of the uh, videos someone asked when do i pass that? and i said all the time every time every day all day about everything and anything communicating with your ancestors does not need to be confined to a certain space because their dna is with you your blood is their blood now there are certain instances where you pass up for a certain formal reason or ritual for an example you've just had a child there your parents will then need to pass up for you and you will wear what needs to be worn there'll be an animal if an animal needs to be slaughtered in your culture and that is what you will do and this is if everything is okay guys I, that's why i'm saying in your culture you will then understand each culture will be different and therefore i cannot sit here and <laughs> and give a directive and say this is how you will do it you'll always have to go to the elders and ask them but if you are failing to get that guidance that is when you go to a traditional healer we do a spiritual consultation and we ask our how do you then go about doing this ritual because some are so rigid to the physical being that we are but to spirit there are ways that it can be twisted around in order for things to happen and for the connection to take place if you've just um if you are just getting married you will not go and pass up for your lobola or for your marriage or welcome your husband obviously elders will be there and they will be the one who will be doing it for you so it's if you're going to report something usually an elder will be there to report whether it's a pregnancy whether it's a job whether it's a new house if you're opening a new house or you are just you know coming to show up and your new car it will always be your parents or someone elder if you do no longer if you no longer have parents and uncle and aunt who will be there to help you so you will always need to understand the reason if you're coming to also apologize there will always be a, a someone who needs to stand for you as an elder if you are coming to so i've said you come to report you come to um, apologize you're also coming to announce or introduce a child a car whatever that it is it will depend on the reason and the culture in your own space from your elders how you do it but introducing yourself is your name your parents and your grandparents and like i said for me i will always say i am the firstborn daughter of so and so who is the what what do, son of so and so just like i said it earlier i hope that this video has helped you and it will give you guidance on how you can introduce yourself when you get in samo but remember this is not a prescription you don't need to replay this video 10 times and repeat each and every word that i'm saying the, all that is important is when you introduce yourself your name is there your parents name is there and your grandparents name is there the others will then know and how do they connect with you if you are adopted you use your parents the parents that you are with you always use their surname and you acknowledge those ancestors because that is where the the uh the concept of a foreign spirit comes from when we say hey but because we are we even in the olden days adoption was happening and it could be through trade or it could be through um actually a child that is adopted into the family so do not ever disregard it can be because you know you can be adopted by your aunt it can be an uncle who adopted you whatever 
way adoption took place but you will always uh, acknowledge it was la lapo where you are adopted and then go if you know your ancestors then connect to them Ukpatha is one of those topics that can be unpacked until, 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 until. And this is because we do it differently depending on our culture, our standing spirituality and who we are and the people that walk with us. Do not disregard, do not dismiss. If it does not resonate with you, watch another goggle, listen to another lesson. I'm so happy because there's such vast information out there for you to pick and choose and find what resonates with you and what doesn't but for me introducing yourself means saying your name your parents and your grandparents and that is done with each and every ukpatla that you do and this is the formal part of ukpatla when you are kneeling down you are at your msamo panzi um whatever you want to call it the space that you are you, you are using to partner your sacred space where you talk to your ancestors you come there with intention and you introduce yourself in a formal way each and every time if you partner in the morning and you need to come partner in the evening even in the evening you're still going to introduce yourself hence i always say to people i communicate with my ancestors everywhere every day all day but for me to go to the shrine i go certain like i can spend two days without actually going m samo but i'm still communicating with my ancestors but going m samo i know that i really need to be in a certain way and that again is ukognoma in her own space because even in my bath while i'm sitting and soaking i'm communicating with my ancestors i'm connecting with them so it's all about why are you doing Upatha. what is the reason behind that specific upatha that you're doing why are you communicating to your ancestors at that time my name is gognoma i hope that this lesson was insightful and please do not forget leave a comment tell me how you introduce yourself to your ancestors i'd also love to learn from you if you have not yet followed me on other social platforms i am on uh, instagram facebook tiktok it is learning with noma on tiktok we are sharing a lot of information each and every day so do be sure to go and visit and check it out i do like i do put um tiktok moments there and there here on youtube but yeah if you want to see more visit me on tiktok and um let us learn together let us grow together until next time thank you for joining me this is learning with namaya comprehensive online classroom where we are changing our lives one lesson at a time a lesson learned in this classroom should be a lesson shared if you did not subscribe click the subscribe button thank you